that we're small, it is important and it does count and it matters. And if we can have conversations about it, maybe we will figure it out one day. Or we'll just find a balance, yeah. Yeah. Talking about heights, aren't you afraid to, you know, after 9-11, we're so, so high, you know, like do we have this fear that something like might happen then, could happen again, you're in the building that high, you know, hard to get out of, you know? Well, I will tell you that the the building, this, this building starts on the 50th floor for the apartments, so I only get to my apartment from the elevator, and it shoots up really quickly. There's probably everybody on the elevators because it starts at 50. And there's only two floors before that, which is like the, the gym, and then one other one other level. So I've never taken the stairs all the way down. Now you give me an idea for, for something to do one day. Maybe I'll time myself and see how long it takes me to run downstairs from 60 to the bottom. I've never done it. Do I know where the stairwell is? Yes. Guess what? It's right next to my apartment. So I know where it is. I know how to get there. I'm aware of it. And I could run down there. One day I heard smoke. I smelled smoke. I smelled smoke in the hallway. You're not supposed to smoke, actually. It's, you, you get kicked out of the apartments if you smoke. But I smell smoke. And thinking fire, okay, not that so much smoking in there, but thinking immediately fire, because it's the same concept, whether it's fire or bomb or terrorism, how are you going to get out, okay? So I went here, I caught somebody smoking in the stairwell. I said, you know what, you're not allowed to do this. I called the concerts immediately, it came up, because what if a fire was started? Exactly, it's a safety hazard, and then I'm worried about getting out. Keep the fire is in the stairwell, how am I getting out the elevator? And then the electricity goes off, and there's no lights, and you need electricity to run for the elevator to run, too. So the bottom line is that I'm aware of the fact that I live this high up. Again, I'm not scared because I'm safe within myself, but I know how to, I know where the exit is. I know how to get out. And I should time it. It's actually interesting that you said that I should time myself to get out. I don't think I ever not gonna live up this high <laughs> now that I do because I just love it and it's it's you know amazing. Yeah, it is you know. Yeah. And I get up every morning and I see this and I see it laying in bed. So you know you get to a point you're saying, again. Am I safe? Yes, I am safe. And I live in a country that I feel safe, and I live in a town that I feel safe, and I trust the building that I live in that they're taking care of things for me to feel safe. You know, you could you could go, you could go, you could go live in an island with no one. There'd be no reason for anyone to harm you or go there or bomb the island. You could be alone and something can happen unpredictable that you don't know about. It's just you, know, you can't predict every single solitary thing that's gonna happen in the future. And I think that's the challenge. Everyone's trying to figure out what's the next thing that's going to happen, and is anything else going to happen, and is something else going to happen, and when's it going to happen, and is it going to happen soon, or is it not going to happen for a while, or where is it going to happen? Is it going to happen here? Is it going to happen in Russia? Is it going to happen in France? Do you know what I'm saying? And so this is the thing. Everyone's trying to outwit, outsmart the next person where something's going to happen. Well, how do you ever enjoy your life? Right. You know, it's just... Well, I did used to be more. Well, I think that, again, being aware of your surroundings, were, were you just not aware before? Does being aware mean you're less relaxed? I think we gotta get, I think we gotta get to the point that we're relaxed and aware. I know that sounds like a <laughs> catch-22, but I think we gotta get to the point where we can sustain moving forward in the world and be comfortable and relaxed and still aware. The idea of not being aware is not thoughtful or responsible, and yet, yeah, you don't want to be like on edge like 24-7, like, you know, like that. Yeah. You just have a nervous breakdown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So tell me about what you do. And then I became an assistant manager and a manager at a bank branch, and I was very 
very young. So I was managing people that were like more than twice my age. And so that was very interesting. But I loved finance and I loved numbers. And I was doing loans. So then the president of the bank actually approached me and created a position for me to do nothing but loans, which didn't exist at the company. And then he would pay me commission on doing loans. So that could be loans, car loans, installment loans, workers, everything. So I was actually apprehensive about doing it. <laughs> Worried that I would, you know, not be able to make enough money, and he was trying to convince me, Melissa, you'll make more money. Well, I, I, he convinced me. I took the job, and then the rest is history. I ended up doing mortgages for that company, went and left to a different place, and then moved all around the United States to different places doing loans. And then, you know, the mortgage industry just changed. You know, we were just talking that story about the market and different sectors that are affected by different things. Well. When all the bank collapses happened, then the mortgage industry, companies were going out of business. Banks didn't want to lend to people. You know, it didn't matter if you had this good credit or that good credit. Companies were going under and loans were going bad. And, and if you were doing it like I was doing it, I would get up in the bed out of the morning all of a sudden, oh, this place just closed down. That's, you weren't even surprised. You're like, oh, this is interesting. And you didn't know all the stuff that was going on behind the scenes, but you knew that things are not good as a person in the industry, when every company is going under, people don't want to lend money, and you're fighting with the banks on the phone, why aren't you doing what you lend to Mr. and Mrs. Smith? You know, they're perfect. And so I saw the writing on the wall. And so when I saw the writing on the wall, I decided I needed to find another career. But I did keep doing mortgages for quite a few years while I taught myself how to trade, because when I started trading, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a clue. You know, so I lost money at the beginning, but kept working. And then I ended up figuring it out. But it was a long process to figure out how to trade, and, and then I did. And then my friends encouraged me to start a business and teach people what I know how to trade on gaps, like we talked about with the gaps that happened in the airlines after 9-11, when something happens dramatic, and that dramatic thing could be something gapping down, or it could be something gapping up, where you could get up in the morning, let's say you own stock in Amazon, and it got up on the earnings. <gasps> You get up in the morning and all of a sudden you have all this money and more money you dreamed of. That can happen too. So I just day trade. And every once in a while I'll do an option in an overnight. An option is something that has a fixed amount that you can only risk. It's not owning the stock shares outright, which is what happens sometimes when somebody owns a stock like the airlines and then they own it and they're long the stock. They own the shares and then the stock price drops and an event. And whenever I make predictions, like right now I made, I made a prediction that the market will make another brand new all-time high this year. I say based on any world calamity or world events, because you never know something can happen. Everything looks good, the market's rallying, we're in a bullish uptrend, everything's fine, all of a sudden something happens that no one can predict. And there's a lot of things happening in the world right now that are like, anything can happen and something's way over your way. You know, so the fact is you just got to put that out there for people. But I just focus on day trading. So yeah, so then I came back to New York. After I figured out, I came back to New York, and, and I love what I do, and I love the market, and I, I don't trade all day. I mean, I couldn't sit here with you if I had a regular job. I wouldn't be able to take the time to do it. So I'm a day trader. I trade in the morning. I run the trading room, people that did my class, and then I teach a class you know, once a month on the weekends. And, and that's it. And it's, it's nice, because I get to enjoy all the things in New York that a person makes it worthwhile to live here, because it's expensive to live in a city. And if you live here, you want to be able to do stuff and get out. Right. Yeah. So you were enjoying the life. I'm enjoying my life. It was a hard road to get here, though, as far as work and perseverance to get to this point. I think, you know, do I wish that I would have found the stock market in my early 20s right after college? Of course, you know. But hindsight's always 2020. You know, say, well, should have, would have, could have. I'm just glad that I found it, you know. Right. And you got all the right other experiences, you know, which is good too. It's an experience too. Yeah. It's just good experiences. Definitely the, the mortgage business gave me a lot of experience to, to deal with finance and also numbers, which I'm just really good at very quickly. And the interesting thing is teaching people how to trade. The biggest challenge people have is just basic arithmetic. Because a lot of us haven't been in school for years, a long, long time. And we're so used to everything being automated and the calculator and everything else, we're not used to doing numbers in our head. But it's really just a lot of it's simple arithmetic sometimes when you're figuring out share sizes or something like that and taking a position in a trade. And a lot of people have to go back and kind of relearn those things. But I think trading is something that 
anyone can do from any walk of life if they want to take the time to learn how to do it. The thing is that a lot of people don't. Like I could say to you, go buy Amazon, you'll just go buy it. You won't even be like, I don't need that class, I'm just going to do what she says. You know what I'm saying? And if that doesn't sustain you, if you want to do it for a living or if you want to make money, even investing in your 401k, your retirement, that, that type of thing doesn't sustain you. You know, just taking a soft pick.